I can still go. <laughs> Pretty fast, too. Yeah, there we go, man. Ooh. Ladies, Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Side Project Podcast. I wasn't able to do the Swift Podcast hey, snap, but yeah. Your karate I don't want chops anything are limited. Else. I don't want anything else to yeah. snap. Your karate chops are limited, man. You gotta. You, I can still karate chop you. You know, <laughs> going so hard, dude. I just you gotta have to throw, throw my, it down, my man. My whole body has to just. You just gotta. Now, yeah. now when you do it, you got to whole body do it. Yeah, you got to whole body a, do it. A, you can't a, move your elbow the whole way. So now you just whole... got to, hey, yeah. <laughs> I'm getting it in. <laughs> oh, Typical man. side project podcast fashion. Yes. How's everybody doing, man? I was going to say, how, how's everybody going? How you, how you going? How fast are you how guys you going? going today, man? Fast as fuck, boy. How is everybody doing, man? You almost, had, a, you uh, almost had like little mean girls uh, moment right there where dude, you're going to, you're going to have the everybody's going moment. Like. You're going to make going got, happen instead of fetch. I got to tell you, though, I like Mean Girls. Oh, yeah. That movie is like, Are you talking shit. about Mean Girls in general? Or are no, you talking I about don't like, like actual real life Mean Girls. Okay? You guys are mean. You need to tone it down and be a little nicer. Okay? But the movie, the movie, great. I like that movie, man. Great movie. But, uh, all right, man. We got, a, uh, we got a cool episode, man. We got something that we've been wanting to do for a, for long, a long time, time man something we want to talk to you guys about something that's kind of a uh, cult classic in a sense in the gaming world here it's uh the first 128 bit console the first home console to come with a 56k modem built in still rocking four ports for couch co-op a controller design that would be the inspiration for many consoles moving forward boasting a memory card with a screen on it for many games that you could take with you on the go this white beauty launched in the U.S. on $9,999 for $199 and was the last console from the Blue Blur's parental figures, and that is the extraordinary Sega, Sega Dreamcast. Dreamcast. But we're not talking about it alone here today, as we've invited the man himself, who has been commissioned by the gaming gods themselves to create the one true video game podcast where he invites guests onto his show to talk about their favorite gaming memories, which we've been on in the past. Please welcome from the Gaming Memories pod, Cade, Cade. Call. Hey, how's it going, man? Uh, it's going good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going good. It's going good. Oh, I mean, I, uh, I, you, uh, I'm impressed with the intro. I'm impressed. Oh, thank yeah. you, man. It's Did you guys first time. that? No, nah, never done it. <laughs> nah, dude. Just, first you know, thought about dude, it all you right had, here. You had like, like a body, like a mini dance going on. You're doing hand <laughs> movements in sync. I'm, I'm a very, I'm a very. Uh, when I talk, I'm a very, very you know, handy in, person. In, in, into it, dude. Sometimes yeah. I just go into convulsions when I talk and I pass out, and people are like, "Is he okay?" Juice yeah. is always like he's fine. He's just talking. I've, I've tried to get him tested before, but they said he's fine. <laughs> so I don't. I don't yeah, know. man. So yeah, dude. For uh, we've been on we've been on your podcast before, Gaming Memories Pod, uh, which you guys can find that on Instagram at gaming underscore memories underscore pod, and also on TikTok, TikTok. at gaming memories pod. And his podcast is available where podcasts stream. Uh, we had a great time on yours, man. We talked about a flurry of different things. I don't even remember everything we talked about, but I I know we talked about a lot of different things, and it was a really really good time. Why don't you tell for uh, for the people that may not know you or viewers that tune in to our podcast and also may not know you a little bit about yourself and and what your podcast is about as well uh <laughs> just real quick the, the, the dirty <laughs> truth of my podcast is the intro is i get drunk and i make <laughs> jokes about growing up mormon and then that's how i cope with it and then i invite someone on who i think is interesting and i ask them about their their games they liked growing up it's like a good way to just like yeah break the word? get to know somebody yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Especially if you've never met someone and you, you've asked for them to come on the podcast, or like reached out to you guys. I know you're into video games. It's easy to break the ice pretty quick. Yeah. If you're both into games, like get them talking about the first video game they, and then they'll, their eyes will start lighting up. They start it's associating true. you with those positive feelings. And yeah. then all of a sudden you can have like, and you go off, you'll go off on tangents and talk about life, but you, you get yeah. to this comfortable area pretty quick. Mm -hmm. I just yeah. starting with the video games and it's a good way for me to talk to people I find interesting. And then my TikTok is just clips of me getting drunk and yelling at video games. <laughs> and it's so that's him you need. Your TikTok is super entertaining though. Like it really is super I know. entertaining. People don't dude. even know it's a podcast. They just think I'm <laughs> a streamer, but it started with uh it started with COVID. I couldn't go train mm -hmm. at nights. 
uh, I normally do jujitsu at night. It's like my oh, nice. so it's a big uh, addiction I have. Mm-hmm. And so I just started gaming and like making videos. Yeah. And then they did well. So I'm like, well, this might be a good way to promote the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, and yeah, it really which, worked out. I guess, but people, like I said, I don't know how effective it is because people don't know I do a podcast. They, <laughs> <laughs> they think it's just like gaming clips, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I don't really give a shit. No, but it's actually really entertaining. And his podcast, too, is super entertaining, not just because we were on it. Um, the, I found I also find people through his podcast as well, like uh, not just other podcasters, but this happens to be one. Uh, I found the, uh, the game. The GameCube was cool pod. Oh, from dope. from yeah, you they're and dope. they're really yeah. dope yeah and i follow yeah. we follow them on instagram and i listen to their podcast from time to time as well and then um you had dearest abby on who actually found us through you oh. and then that's how we met and now we talk and we communicate and we you know we're in cahoots with each other and all that good stuff and uh, yeah, we actually cool. plan to try to get her to come on our show as well um mm-hmm. after listening to everything that you guys talked about we're like wow man that's super interesting we'd love to sit down and you know, yeah, she a, took me down the rabbit hole with her as well. She yeah, took me down dude. the rabbit hole of Donkey yeah, Kong. Dude. <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, man, we'd love to have a conversation with her. So you guys got to go check out the Gaming Memories Pod and everything that he does on his TikTok. His TikTok's super entertaining, and his uh, his Gaming Memories Pod is super informative, actually, mm-hmm. and funny and entertaining as well, dude. Um, but yeah, man, like I said, we went on we went on your, your pod. I don't remember what episode it was uh, now, but we did go on. So if you guys want to get more of us and Cade talking after this episode, go check out his and you can get more of that. But we wanted to uh, have you on ours, man, and have a conversation with you. And as you can tell, uh, as from the intro and the shirt that Cade is wearing, we're going to be talking about the Dreamcast. <laughs> it's so the Dreamcast was announced May 1st, 1998. It launched... In the U.S. on September 9th, 1999, for 199 dollars, the whole nine thing was the gimmick that they were going yeah, for. Yeah. Very easy to remember. Nine nine ninety nine. I didn't realize for 199. It was only 200 bucks. Yeah, I dude. forgot. That's like pretty affordable, all yeah. things considered. Yeah, man. I wonder. I, it makes me wonder right now. I don't have. Inf- I wonder how much because obviously we're going to be talking about it. How much uh, the competition, the PS2, uh, the Lunch GameCube, price. and the Xbox all came out around that time? I believe. The PS2 was like three ninety nine, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'll check right now. And according to Google, it was PlayStation Two was two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm wrong. Okay. Two ninety nine. Which one else? Which one else did you say? Game? Xbox. The original Xbox. Mm-hmm. What was GameCube launch price? I feel like the GameCube should have been one ninety nine, like the Dreamcast. I bet it was cheaper. Yeah, one ninety nine introduction. One ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense for the GameCube. But the Dreamcast yeah. came out. I mean, shit. Uh, no, that can't be right. The first Xbox was two ninety nine. Yeah, right. That makes sense too. Yeah, I remember the Xbox. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So Xbox and PS two competition in price. Yeah, uh, Dreamcast and GameCube competition in price. They were so same that price right there. there automatically should have shot it through the fucking roof. Yeah, well, all, the did, parents, yeah. all the did, parents. All the parents. All the parents. I mean, I. I, you know, we didn't grow up the best, like, you know, for my parents. So, like, any little dime that she could save, boom, she was saving it. <laughs> so, I could tell you that if the PS2 and this came out on the exact date and that said mm-hmm. $199, that said $299, she, she was getting the $199. $199. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. that alone, it should have gave yeah. it its, its, its boost to kind of to make it through that yeah. era of that competition yeah, at that yeah. time. I don't know. Uh, oh, go ahead. No, go Sorry. Ahead. No, I was no, going to no, say, always. I think... I don't know if this is. Uh, I'm gonna get some of the details wrong, mm-hmm. but I believe the Dreamcast was the fastest moving console for a period of time until I believe the Wii dethroned it. Oh, and shit. it might be number two, not counting handhelds, because I think the Game Boy yeah. Advance is like crushed yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for consoles, I think it's number two as far as fastest moving in the first year. Oh shit! I want to say something along the lines. Of, I think it did really well. Which was weird about the Dreamcast is it shot up. Really quick, I believe, and then it died really quick. Yeah, it yeah. did. Yeah, it, um, yeah. As of right now, according to du- what I'm double looking check at, because there's probably someone out there that knows and they're screaming angry right now. You <laughs> I, know, I know, I know, I know. It was ah, number three, to... not number two. God, I can't believe it. These guys do a podcast. They don't even know what they're talking about. <laughs> Oh, oh man, it's just giving me. Uh, You're talking about it, it's it giving almost, me the best selling and the fastest selling for recently, yeah, which is the PS5. I don't want recently. Selling. I want all time. Well, I, anyways, I got the. De- I don't know if I have the exact, like, the concept. I'm like 99 percent sure 
if we could dig into the stats, you could find somewhere. But what I remember reading, and I believe Patrick Hickey Jr. talked to me about this, and he knows a lot of shit. He's like this. Oh, he would probably author. know. Yeah, yeah, he knows. Yeah, we've had him on as well. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but we, he he agreed. He told me what it was. Uh, confirmed it, but I forgot what it was. It was something along the lines of like the fastest selling for the first year yeah. until the Wii. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. The Wii came in. Uh, but anyway, the point being, it, 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 is it might... did as Juice was saying, it did shoot up. Yeah, it for did. a period of time. Yeah. It, it, in Japan, when it first launched in Japan, it did 400,000 units in, uh, I think it was the first week. That's pretty damn good. Almost I half a million. Don't quote me on that 100%. Yeah. But I know in the U.S., it did, uh, in two weeks, it sold over over half a million units in two weeks. Yeah, it was like 600 in the US. or something like that. Yeah. So, and in between, in between the dates that it was announced and the date that it launched in the U.S., before it launched in the U.S., Sony announced the PS2. Sony announced that the PS2 would be coming before the Dreamcast even launched in the U.S. And, so, and I believe they also said it's coming with the magical DVD player exactly, built in. Exactly, dude. So it's like, but it's, it, it almost sucks because before Dreamcast even got to the U.S. Before it got and time they to advertised shine. everything. They were doing their big nine nine ninety nine for one hundred ninety nine dollars mm-hmm. um, marketing campaign that mm-hmm. got everybody stoked and it's easy to remember. I remember talking about it with friends and everything. Yeah, I remember, I remember nine. specifically saying nine nine ninety nine. I can't believe it. I know it. I know that's what I said at that time. How old was I? I don't know because I'm horrible at math. But he knows. But That's know, exactly what he said. I remember <laughs> sitting in class and turning over to my friend and going, nine 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 nine. nine, nine, nine. I can't believe it. And he was like, I know. It's only $199. I was like, Jesus. I can't believe it, Jonathan. And we were super stoked, dude. Yeah. Super stoked. I would have been but, too. But <laughs> um, what made the Dreamcast so great, but yet it still failed, man? Uh, do you, okay, do you remember when? Uh, do you remember when the, the Dreamcast was first announced, or when it came out? Uh, did, yes. did you did you have it right away, or did you or did you were you like a kid that waited a little longer? Good. I have a great story for both of those. Hell uh, yeah! Number one, I I was hyped for it, but mm-hmm. I, I I think you reminded me the news of the PS2 was out, and I probably yeah because that. I would have had to have got help from my parents to uh, get money. I, I don't I can't remember exactly, but. I was hyped for it. I remember reading in an issue of Electronic Gaming Monthly. I tried to find the issue in preparation for this uh, podcast. Couldn't find the exact issue. Yeah. But they were giving a preview of the new N- the new NFL, whatever, Madden NFL, or 2K. Was it NFL 2K? It was yeah. probably 2K. Yeah. And I, I don't was. play video. I don't play uh, NFL games, really. Mm-hmm. But I was yeah, I interested I in the Dreamcast as, as, like, tech. And I remember mm-hmm. it showing a model from the previous uh, entry in the series of whatever series it was, I think it was 2K on the PS1, mm-hmm. and then showing a model of an average player on the Dreamcast, mm. and them saying that there were more triangles and polygons in just the f- one singular foot of the Dreamcast model of the football player yes. versus all of the triangles in the entire character model for the PlayStation 1 yeah. version of 2K. <laughs> Shit. And just uh, like thinking like graphics can never get better than what I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. Like, I felt this the is, same way. We've, re- we've reached the pinnacle. Like, yes. I, yeah. I remember being here. absolutely amazed when I saw the Dreamcast uh, graphics. I mean, you got to keep in mind, too, when the Dreamcast came out, what did we have before it? We just had the N64, right, mm. was, was the most recent console, and then yep. also the PlayStation 1, right? That's all. That's – Yeah. Yeah, because the PS2 was coming out. Yeah, yeah, we had the N64 and the PlayStation. And believe me, also, when those came out, phenomenal, right? Mind-blowing. We're like, oh, my God, seeing Mario the way we saw him on the N64 for the first time. I remember playing Blitz in 64, dude. Right, yeah. And then I believe Tomb Raider was already out. Tomb Raider first came out on the PS1, right? Does anybody know that? Yes. I think maybe Saturn first and then PS1. Was it Saturn? I I I think technically it was Saturn first for a short period of time. So, again, Um, just giving another like another game with like, you know, higher graphical capabilities for the first time. So we were like amazed by those. But again, you got to keep in mind, it wasn't like what we have now where like we see the PS5 and we see the Series X and we've got already a a 360, another Mm -hmm. Xbox, you know, Mm that. And then, of course, they do the 360S and 360 fucking T minus and like all these random things. The ones to fix the issues that the one that they released. PS3, <laughs> PS3, PS3 Port Pro, Slim, you know, fucking Big Dick Mega Addiction, all these different fucking things that they have. So we're used to seeing all these graphic capa- graphical capabilities now, mm-hmm. which is kind of upgrades and you're still amazed. But back then it was like still like the leaps were fresh. bigger. 
Yeah, the leaps the leap, bigger, yeah, there yeah. we go. That's what I'm trying to say. I couldn't think of the best way to put it across. That's perfect. The leaps were were way bigger. So I remember seeing when the Dreamcast first came out. Yeah, no, there's no way nothing's going like, to Like, oh, man. Yeah. I, yeah, I remember playing games and going, this is absolutely amazing. Like, I can't believe this. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we asked you also, um, you remember when it was first announced? Did you get it when it first came out? No. So I, uh, I, I remember, I think... Probably waiting for the PS2, probably money, whatever. I did I did play at a couple of friends' house, and mm-hmm. I would often go to Toys R Us and play the demo unit because my mom liked to go to, like, Joanne's Fabric. Yeah. Some bullshit that was next yeah. door to Toys R Us. <laughs> so I'm like, sure, yeah. I'll go. And yeah, I'll, just go why not? Play, I'll just go play all the demo units. <laughs> I did it all the time. Yeah, all the time. Too. I did the same I thing. Played, I played a fuck ton of Power Stone because Power Stone yes. 2 fuck, yes. and Power Stone yes. 1 were always on the demo units. Yeah. Uh, yes. I played a lot of Power Stone and then like kids would hang out and you get to play each other. Yeah. Um, I didn't actually buy buy a Dreamcast until much later oh. because I wanted to get the internet in my bedroom without my uh. parents knowing. If you know uh, what I mean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. So, okay. I believe uh, like PS2 was already out, but he had to buy an extra modem. Like like went yeah. into the PS2. Yeah. And I, yeah. I might have PS3 might have already been out. I, I don't remember, but the Dreamcast was cheap, mm-hmm. and I just bought it and used it for the internet. I didn't even have any yeah. games for it. I just yeah, because it, it had internet. yeah, because yeah, the, yeah. the Dreamcast came with the 56k modem built in, yeah. and then yeah. later in its life, it upgraded and it had the broadband connection adapter. But that was also one of the selling points for the Dreamcast because all the consoles before, which I think it was really only, I think it would have only been PlayStation. I think mm-hmm. other than unless you're going like way back, I think Sega had. Um, I don't believe any of the other consoles except Sega back in that era, those times, the 90s and everything. I don't think any of them. Correct me if I'm wrong. Anybody in the comments and anything as well um, had internet capabilities. I think I think you are wrong, and it's not because I know. Am I? I talked to this dude named Chris. Shout out to Chris at the Retro Hangover Podcast. If you guys haven't mm-hmm. talked to them, they're no, I haven't, shit. I don't think but Chris is like a walking goddamn video game encyclopedia. <laughs> he knows all the most obscure shit, and he was showing me like some add-on for the Japanese NES that gave it like online. It wasn't the same same. It really? was like some sort of online. And something for like Sega, like there's some obscure shit out there that I think is like maybe not quite the same in functionality, yeah. but had an online element to it. Uh huh. Okay. I believe there is something that predates. The, there the could be, and then maybe if I saw it again, it would it would it would jog my memory yeah. because also, like you said too, there's a lot of things that uh, sometimes don't release here in the U.S. No, yeah, we get yeah. so they Japan, do exist, but we over here in the north may have not seen it or been aware of it. Mm-hmm. But I do remember. I think it was. Sega Saturn had internet capabilities. I think. first home console with, let's just say online. Because I know, I know the Dreamcast was billed as the first <laughs> home console to have fifty six a fifty six k modem built in. Apparently, we're something. all fucking stupid. And oh, appara- Jesus. It's uh, according to Wikipedia. It was 1996, the Apple Pippin, which I don't even know was a <laughs> the thing. Apple what? I've heard of it, but I can't, I can't picture it in my mind right now. Let me yeah. see. I'm going to pull First it up home as well. console built with built-in internet. So that might be a thing. It's built in. There might have been something that predates it with and like it's coming from Apple. Oh, I remember this. I the remember Apple this. Pippin the Apple, 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 Apple Bandai Pippin. Yeah. I don't, damn, I don't even know what the hell that is. Yeah. Oh, you're right, though. Sega Saturn, yeah. by comparison, the Sega Saturn... Had a was separately it? sold Netlink device. But it did um, have one, though. Yeah. yeah. It did have one for 400 yeah. bucks. So it was cheaper. Jesus. And yeah. the Apple Apple Pippin was $599. $599. Yeah. At that time, that's insanity, dude. What, what games come? were what, on what, the Apple Pippin? You know what's funny is it looks like a Dreamcast. Yeah. Well, I mean, it doesn't look like, but it's reminiscent. No, yeah, you know, yeah. I, Or maybe the Dreamcast is reminiscent, I guess you could say. Dude, I've Dreamcast never even heard of this. I'm surprised you heard of it. I actually do remember seeing this, and I have uh, I have heard of it. Um, yeah, I remember the Jesus logo. Christ. I remember the logo. Pip Pin was the low is the is the logo. It says P I P, and then, then under, under it P I N. Yeah, I do remember seeing this. Um, the name yeah, didn't sure. ring a bell, but I remember the console itself. Yeah. I remember looking at it. Interesting, man. Huh. Interesting, dude. Yeah, there's so many consoles. I people I, people use the know of me as like the super video game nerdy guy yeah right? this guy that just loves video games he's weird mm-hmm. uh but I, there's so much i don't know and like you realize yeah. there's levels to everything oh because yeah of the, 100%. because of the podcast i've been like 
interacting with more people and yeah. I realized, oh yeah, this rabbit hole goes deep. I didn't yeah. even know, <laughs> apparently, I had a Sega Game Gear, I had a Sega 32X, I had I a Sega CD. I didn't have the 32X. I had the whole trifecta, like what I thought was like you the had Sega all of it, which trifecta. Was, yeah. yeah. And uh, apparently there's a thing called the Sega Nomad, which is a portable yeah. Genesis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that like somehow I can Even bigger than the Game Gear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you can plug the actual Sega cartridges right into it, right? You do. And yeah. like the Switch, you can plug it into your TV. Yeah. Play it on the, the big hell? screen. Yeah. So it's like it's basically like a Nintendo Switch. Sega it's did a it Switch. First. Yeah. From the nineties. <laughs> they so took I had, an idea from there. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I had yes. no idea existed. And I'm like, yeah. how did I go through childhood? And have a 32X, which is pretty obscure. Yeah. A Sega CD, mm -hmm. which is maybe less I didn't have, obscure. Yeah, I didn't have that either. And uh, but not I had I did I didn't even know the Nomad existed. Yeah, yeah, I remember. So that. there's just yeah. so much shit. I didn't in have gaming. one, but I remember it. Yeah, yeah. Same thing with the I Apple had... Pippin. What the fuck is this <laughs> Pippin? <laughs> For six hundred dollars, who bought that at that time? And somebody in did. The, in the nineties, you know what I mean? Who who was Some like, you know what? Apple just we say, got, hey, we got Nintendos, Pippin. we got Segas, but you know what? Fuck that! I need the Apple Pippin. You know what I mean? Like, who bought that, dude? I don't know. I'm sure it failed. I, I remember little things about it. I feel like I watched a documentary on YouTube about it one yeah. time. It does kind of look, dude. It kind of looks sexy. <laughs> For you, for you, real quick, uh, what would you say was your favorite, or what what was the game that you had the most memories of with uh, for Dreamcast? Like, what would you say is your favorite Dreamcast game? Well, I already mentioned Power Stone. Yeah, because that was like a you know something magical about the like the limitations and like I can only play this on the demo thing mm -hmm. when I have a chance to play it. <laughs> to, uh, yeah. It has a special, but as far as yeah. time, definitely uh, Legacy of Kane Soul Reaver. Oh my yeah. God! Yes. Yeah, Soul Reaver oh, and Soul Reaver Two. The dude. dude. The uh, yeah. and I, I ended up playing them later. So there's a really awesome uh, emulator called Redream. It's like mm -hmm. a it, it's an emulator for the Dreamcast on Windows, and I think you pay like ten bucks to get the the ultra. I, I don't have any association with them, but I thought it was worth ten bucks. Mm -hmm. And it it can play everything in like 4K and like give you modern sort of stuff. And I okay. replayed Soul Reaver on the emulator semi recently and it's yeah, still like too. it's uh, a the dreamcast version because dreamcast was like was better than the ps1 but yes i don't know if like raw horsepower it my gut would tell me it's like a slight tier below the ps2 mm -hmm. okay but soul mm -hmm. reaver was a ps1 game yeah but the dreamcast version was the best way to play that game yes it was i, I, I don't remember if i ended up playing it on dreamcast mm -hmm. at that time in my life. I think it was later when I revisited it because I feel like Soul Reaver is one of my favorite games, but I feel like I, I have more memories playing it on the PlayStation than I do the Dreamcast, Probably. unfortunately, yeah. which sucks. But it had been well, out for a while. I mean, the Dreamcast yeah. version came out much later. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and that, that's something about the Dreamcast that I love, dude, is they, they launched with so many games when they first launched. They launched with 16 games, dude. On the, their, on their launch day, yeah. there. and it's like, and by the way, Sony, Xbox, let's let's you know, let's take note of that. <laughs> let's take note instead of, <laughs> of launching our consoles with no fucking games, okay? Instead of launching our consoles with games that already exist on the previous consoles, let's launch with con let's launch the consoles with games that exist for this era of the consoles. Or I actually what, launch launch with the consoles that is the whole selling point to your console. Uh, are the games. Are, are the, the games. games. Are the good games, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wonder but, what the strategy is to be like, we're going to launch even though we don't have any... Like, why do they do that? I don't know, but it's like... Because they probably ridiculous. Look at how long so the, those, behind, those new consoles have been out, and there's still, to this day... Not many games that are made specifically for that for console that can handle and those even, capabilities even, and everything. Even then, like that, they're yeah. just like remastering games, like uh, like GTA again. You it's know what I mean? Enhanced like, GTA. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like you're just keep enhancing games. You know what I mean? They brought the new the Spider Man for the PS4 over to the PS5, yeah. but gave you Miles Morales. But it's only like I think what's what's the story like four hours or six hours or something? The story some, or some weird eight hours there. or something? I think it's like yeah, under it's ten or short. something for sure. Mm -hmm. It's a short game, so they remastered and gave you the or the enhanced version of Spider Man. And then kind of give you a little incentive yeah. like here's the short story for miles morales but they're doing yeah. the same thing with final fantasy 7 you get the yuffie yeah. dlc yeah. 
Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's yeah, like, yeah. let's launch with some fucking games because that's what we want. Yeah, you know what that's I mean? One thing, that's one thing that I think we had that conversation during the Dr. Disrespect episode that we yeah. did. Uh, we've had that conversation a couple different times, yeah. but it's always like... It's ridiculous. You guys are giving us all these capabilities or your whole selling point to this console is, is the that new capabilities. I, have, I have this technology. This is crazy. It's going to look so crazy with mm-hmm. this new game, uh, but uh, yeah. I, I just don't have any games for you to test yeah. it yet. The so new games like that we make we're... specifically for this console are going to load in a second, but we actually can't show just, you that just, because we don't have any games for you to, to play. <laughs> but like, buy it anyway! <laughs> buy it, yeah, 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 exactly. Buy it now! You know what I mean? But I think that was awesome back in the day for the Dreamcast, dude. Uh, 16 games, and I'm obviously not going to list them all, but yeah. the first one of the first games that launched with it was Soul Calibur, and that was the first foray yeah. into Soul Calibur. That was the first introduction into that game, and that game was phenomenal. I remember when I first played that game, I was like, because I'm a big I was more into, I know you were more growing up into Street Fighter. Yeah, I, I love was more, Street Fighter, I was yeah. always a more of a Mortal Kombat guy. There's also okay. Marvel vs. Capcom, which yep. I liked playing in arcades, mm-hmm. but I never owned it for a home console. Uh, what about you, Cade, real quick? Were you, were you more of a Street Fighter guy or a Mortal Kombat guy? Street Fighter. Yeah, oh, I mean, man, I'm I liked the only Mortal, MK guy here. <laughs> I liked Mortal Kombat. Uh, I probably liked Mortal Kombat more as far as, like, style lore but i yeah. played way more street fighter because everyone had mm-hmm. street fighter everyone's yeah. mom would let them it's play true. street yeah. fighter yeah. not everyone's yeah. mom would let them play mortal kombat <laughs> yeah it's true yeah it's yeah. true but uh, so when soul caliber came Which out i, I was hooked I don't on that dude. i don't understand why though because street fighter was just as brutal I no think way just, no there's just no blood because there's yeah, no well, blood yeah it was your still, heads aren't getting decapitated. Still, not even close. People aren't ripping heads off, yeah. and you see the spine dangling. But I'm thinking, I'm trying to think. And then of he like, licks it. And for he them, looks at the camera and goes, "Oh, saucy." For them, they're looking at that it. Ne- as that like, never it's happened, still by the way. A fighting <laughs> game. Man, I, I don't know. Like I, I just, yeah. I, don't, I don't understand no, why totally, they would. It's different. And then, uh, and then, of course, it had. Uh, and we talked about it earlier. NFL mm. 2K, uh, NFL Blitz mm. was still around at that time. NFL Blitz 2000 was on. Was a launch title. Uh, Ready to Rumble Boxing. That Ready was to fun Rumble as hell. Was a fucking good. Ass I remember game. that. Yep. And then Mortal Kombat Gold. Really and of course, game. you know we got to talk about it. The biggest game, the highest selling game for the Dreamcast, still. Obviously, Sonic, Sonic Adventure. Yeah, yeah. Sonic, Sonic Adventure. Adventure. And I remember Is it when Sonic, Sonic Adventure one or two. That's the highest selling. I think, I think it was it's still. Sonic I think it's still the first though. one. I think the first one is yeah, still I think I was the looking. highest selling, but the second one is more loved by fans. That's what I think. I think that's mm-hmm. what it is. I'll look it up right yeah, now. Look it up. Yeah, look um, it up. But I remember, I remember seeing. Uh, I mean, I remember when I first got the Dreamcast. Um, shout out to Jar of Retro. Our viewers will know Jar of Retro. Mike, we grew up together. Uh, we were. Uh, I always it's such a long story but the best way to put it is that we we were stepbrothers and we are no longer stepbrothers because our parents <laughs> our parents are no longer together that's the easiest way Okay, we still kind of consider each other family. We still stay in touch. We I'm still hang never, out. Never, never, never. Really. Our parents were together. We grew up together. There we go. Um, so I remember when nice. we uh, when we got the Dreamcast, man, we were super stoked. I even remember like opening it up, and I have this weird thing like I like the smell of new technology, like. <laughs> I like the I'm a smell. technology sniffer. It could even be like musical in- instruments and things like that. Like I like the smell when you got it when you get a new gaming PC and you open it like the way I, I mean uh, the, mm-hmm. a keyboard and you open it and the way it sounds. Uh, I like when you open a new console. I mean smells. God damn, I can't talk today. Smells. And when you open up a new console, the way it smells. Like when we first got these mics, I love yeah. the way that they smell. I don't know. I don't know where that comes from, but I love it. And like I still have these memories because you know it's all sensory. Your smell mm-hmm. and everything is all linked. And I just have this memory of opening the uh, the Dreamcast. Same same thing with the uh, with the GameCube, and like the smell of the hardware. I don't know, dude. And I just remember it, man. And I, you should have done a. My little pecker got hard at that time, and I was like, "Look out, Mike! Look, get away!" Because I didn't want it to blow him back. Uh, it was a weird. Okay. Si- it was a weird situation. I thought, and a weird I thought you called your pecker Mike after your brother. because no, that would have no, been no, kind of weird. That would have been weird. No, yeah. but I, I, Mike will tell you. He'll remember. Maybe I'll okay. throw in a little screenshot of him going, "Ah, I remember." Oh, I remember. But I remember opening the Dreamcast, and now we got Sonic Adventure <laughs> with it right away. And Michael attests to this. Um, I stayed up the first night that we got oh. it. We stayed up twenty four hours. We did not go to sleep. Jesus Christ. We played Sonic Adventure. Like the whole night that we got it, did I don't you know have, what time did, or whatever. Did you have to put the little towel under the door so they can't? Nah, your parents nah, 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 didn't nah, nah. see the light. My, kinda my, my dad and everything. He was he was cool, man. My yeah. dad was always that kind of guy, uh, which a lot of people in my family, uh, my aunt and all my cousins mm-hmm. and everything too, were all big gamers and everything in my whole family. And uh, my family's always been the type when we were growing up. You know how like some people were like, video games are the reason that you know this and that. Yeah. Mortal Kombat's the reason people are shooting up schools and this and that. Oh, you know I, what I mean? I like all that, that kind of stuff. My family was always the type that were like when we were 
kids, they would rather have us be playing video games because they knew where we were and that we would be at home as opposed to being out on the street doing some fuck shit. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? My family was always like that. But I just remember getting the Dreamcast, putting in Sonic, Mm -hmm. and just like having the time of my life, dude. You know, and we beat the game pretty fast. I don't remember the time frame or anything, but I just remember beating it in in a short amount of time. And we were just up days on end, just playing that game. And that's probably as cliche as it is because it's Sonic and it's a Sega console and all that, blah blah blah. But Sonic is uh, my standout memory playing the Dreamcast, man. And um, it's still I don't know. Some people would say that that game holds up today. Some people would say that it doesn't. I haven't played it myself in a long time. Have you played it, Cade? I, did you even like? Did you like Sonic Adventure? Were you into it? I played it later on emulator. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like it. It is not my. F- it's my second favorite 3D Sonic. Okay. What, my, what's your uh, first favorite my, 3D Sonic? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to slide because I'm, I'm a big. I'm a big Sonic fan. So uh, I and I have something for you that I would bet you've never played. Oh, there okay. is a. I forget the exact name. Robo Blast. Ooh, Robo Blast. All right, Sonic. I'm going to look at Robo up too. Blast Two. It is a Doom mod <laughs> that turns oh, Doom. Oh, okay, that's into why. a yeah, Sonic okay. game, and it actually plays fucking awesome. I see that. Yeah, Doom Legacy Port of Doom. Okay, all right. It's called Sonic Robo that's Blast. That's fucking 2. awesome, dude. Okay, I actually, right. I've been playing it, so I, have, I might have a little bit of a recency bias. I just started playing it like three weeks ago. I'm going to have some videos uh-huh. coming out with it, and uh, they. To me, they captured the weight in the feel of Sonic 2. Like, if, to me, in it feels 3D. like playing Sonic 2, yeah. but in 3D. Okay. I'm going so to have to check me, this out. I'm, I'm into it. I'm definitely I'm going to check it. this out. I may have to get back into streaming mm-hmm. again and, and stream this. What's your favorite, while we're talking about Sonic, what's your favorite um, mainline, like Sonic 1, 2, 3, like the 90s ones and whatnot? Sonic 1, 2, 3. And Sonic and Knuckles, I guess you could say. I guess you could throw Sonic Mania in there too. I know it's later, but that style, that 2D, two D, that retro sure. style. Two. Which one? Which one is two? Is your favorite? Yeah, and I, I wouldn't say I did play Sonic and Knuckles on the thirty. There was a or, I think Sonic and Knuckles had a separate thirty two X version because I remember plugging, mm-hmm. or maybe I'm getting memories mixed up. But wasn't there like a cartridge that you would plug? Yeah. Sonic um, and Knuckles into you would plug. I, I believe you would. It was the Sonic and Knuckles game. What came? It was a regular cartridge, but it was shaped a, a little bit different, and it had like this little thing that you could pop up, and it was another um, slot, slot oh. and you could put Sonic Three on top of it, and you could plug. So basically, the um, Sonic and Knuckles would plug into your Genesis, and then Sonic Three would plug into your Sonic and Knuckles, so that way you could play Sonic Three and Knuckles. Oh, what the fuck? So it was a combination Wait. of Sonic 3 and Sonic and Knuckles all in one big game. Oh, so you could play Knuckles on Sonic 3 levels? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you could okay. play as Knuckles okay. in Sonic 3 levels, and you could also play Sonic and Knuckles separately if you want. I was getting it mixed yeah. up because the 32X you can also plug in regular Genesis games into as well. So yes. Was, yeah, 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 yeah. I would say Sonic and Knuckles would probably, if it wasn't for some memories I've had with Sonic 2... Mm-hmm. I think Sonic and Knuckles might technically be a better game. Like the be- levels are better designed. It's not as it doesn't yeah. give as much love. It does not get as much love. I think love. it should. Yeah. Yeah. But Sonic uh, my 2, favorite is Sonic Three though. I have Sonic I, Sonic Three just holds. It, it's also it could be different for everybody because it's like the memories linked to yes, it at the time yes. in your life. And so yeah. I like at that time in my life was a sappy moment here. Uh, <laughs> but for people that it's it's a whole story. But it's just for that time in my life like was a moment where I would play with my mom a lot. Mm. And uh, my mom and I haven't had the best relationship over our uh, over my lifetime, mm. and so I that's a moment where I do remember that my mom it's and I had shit. Yeah, yeah, it was a really great time in my life that links it to that. I mean, that's not the only reason why I like Sonic Three, but mm. it's just a memory that I always link to Sonic Three yeah. because Sonic Three had the multiplayer, the com- the competitive mode. Yes. Where you could do the multiplayer, True. the split screen, top yes. and bottom, and you could uh, you could play as Sonic, Knuckles, uh, or Tails. Tails. And I remember constantly always doing that with my mom and playing the competitive mode and just having a really good time. So I have a I have a similar thing with Sonic too. Uh, it's just I I saved up to get a Genesis for a long time. My parents I think, told I me. I think you told I think you I told, think told us told on, this, yeah, that yeah, on, yeah. on your yeah, episode like, that we did. But still, tell it for the yeah for them now, to yeah. hear. It's like, I always tell it because it's like one of the coolest. It's a, yeah. it's good parenting. I think about. It, I'm like, God, my parents were smart. 
Yeah. They like taught me <laughs> lessons and they bribed yeah. me with video games. They just they just did everything yeah. perfect in yeah. that situation. Yeah. And they're like, you want to you want us you want a Genesis? Cool. You got to save up. It was like sixty five bucks, oh, yeah, which was yeah. so much money for however old I was. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I made a shoebox. I drew Genesis shit on it. Genesis <laughs> controllers. And you said Sonic. that's that's it right there. That's I the visualized goal. that shit. I earned the money. It took me who knows how long. It seemed like yeah. forever. Mm-hmm. But in the meantime, I had gotten Sonic 2 as a Christmas gift mm-hmm. with no Genesis yet. Yeah. It's like my parents were like, yeah, yeah, you're going to get it. You got to earn it. Like, yeah. we're going to dangle that, Something this. similar yeah. happened to me with the N64. And I would just sit and read the, read it, like the book yeah. over and over again. Look at the game. Yeah, dude. And then I finally got the Genesis and finally got to play yeah, Sonic 2. Playing. So for me, that's Sonic 2. So yeah. your first foray into Sonic was Sonic 2, Sonic not Sonic 2. 1. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, That's crazy. Because it took me cool. it took me so long to get Genesis. So I'm <laughs> yeah. to come out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's what's cool about the the Dreamcast, man. They brought they brought a ton of ga- great games to the console, and I mean, just g- games in general. They brought mm-hmm. a ton of games in general. Mm-hmm. Sega's always that's something that I always appreciated with Sega is they they put out a lot of games, man. Mm-hmm. They put out a lot of games. I mean, also they also put out a lot of consoles, <laughs> which was like kind of unnecessary. Yeah. They kind they put out way more, they put out well, double the amount of consoles out- in their competition. They also put out a lot of arcade games. That's exactly, well. and that's where exactly yeah. where I was going. You read my mind, dude. That's exactly where I was going with it is they put a lot of great games on the console, but still also brought the arcade yes. into your home, which I think was good for some, but a hit or miss for others. Obviously, not everything is for everyone, but because the especially because the arcade was kind of a dying concept. This was you know 1999 with the Dreamcast. Uh, some gamers were more interested in seeing like. Uh, the new graphics and what the new graphics could do and fleshed out storylines, what they would be like, the fleshed out storylines, mm-hmm. engulfing cutscenes now, you know, for, for and for that time, it was, like we said earlier, the graphics were mind-blowing, man, but others might have still enjoyed like this arcade style and felt nostalgic maybe and also amazed by the fact that like the arcade was basically in their living room, you know, which, uh, I mean, which wasn't te- technically not a new concept, you know, you got Atari and all those as well, yeah. you, you know what I mean, Nintendo games and etc., but they were still keeping that alive i think more than other consoles maybe in my opinion um which also you, they brought that to life within certain fighting games of course that were you know big in arcade and now on the dreamcast yeah. and then also with the likes of like crazy taxi uh, you know crazy i was taxi. gonna bring that up I was, that's the arcade yeah. game taxi i was thinking of but one of those the best one of those games yeah. arcade yeah, port of that game yes yeah it's the only place you're gonna play that you can't you Amazing. can't go play that game in arcade anymore yeah. You want to play Crazy Taxi, the old school? You got to play it on Dreamcast. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing, dude. Go it, find your Dreamcast so you can play an yeah. arcade game on go it. Go get it right now. Yeah. Pause it's, this it's, episode. It's more than likely. Go get it and come back and press play. More than likely not one ninety nine no more. Yeah. <laughs> Just throwing Probably that not. out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, you can get them for uh, for uh, decently cheap still. Like a good, like, yeah. uh, I, I was looking it up the other day, actually. You can get them for like 60 to 80 bucks at certain places. Yeah. At least here it's where we're at. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I know I was cool with both when the Dreamcast came out, like the arcade games and the new games. I mean, at that age, I wasn't thinking like, you know, the new I style versus this. arcade. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted dope games to play. Yeah. Like, period. We interrupt this program to bring you... This week's episode is sponsored by Quirk Chat. Let's talk geek. Quirk Chat is a video social network for everything geek fandom commentary. Need a friend for discussing your latest anime topics? Got a theory about what's to come next in the MCU? No matter what it is, Quirk Chat is your place to talk geek. Share anime debates and geek commentary. Record your opinion and add it to the original quip. Download the Quirk Chat app on your app store of choice today and start talking geek. Can we talk about the VMU that the Dreamcast came with, man? <laughs> visual memory unit the memory card that it came with the dreamcast had a memory card with a mini screen on it with a mini d-pad and an a a and b button a sleep button and a mode button that plugged into the top of the controller as opposed to the console which was i think that was dope which you'll see that xbox modeled their their uh first original xbox after, after that, that controller, for yeah. sure. After the yes. controller and even the memory card for the Xbox plugged into the top of the Xbox controller. Yes. Just like the Dreamcast. I mean, exactly like the Dreamcast, dude, you know? Yeah. Um, when it was plugged into the controller, it also showcased little graphics. Have like a that, little LED black yeah, screen. Yeah, that yeah, coincided yeah. with the game that you were currently playing. And I think that's really cool, such as like Resident Evil, the health was displayed 
on the on the VMU on the unit. Yep. It was only like a one inch screen. Like I think but it was, it was like tiny. still something though. It was tiny as hell, but yeah. it was still something. It was still cool. Which I got. I got. A, you, you can't see it right now, and neither can you, the viewers. But I got a Dreamcast controller. Down with a guy uh, No, it's fine. I got yeah. a Dreamcast controller uh, portrait framed over by my computer, so I'm looking at it right now, yeah. and it's making me a little horny. I'm not gonna not gonna lie. Um, but NFL 2K2 also display, displayed um, secret plays. On the, on the controller when you were yes. playing it. But the bigger feature that I think a lot of people will probably remember, and if you don't, this was an exciting feature. At least speaking for myself, I was super stoked about it. Mm -hmm. For certain games, it would boast mini games on the VMU itself that you could take out of the controller and play on the go. You could play on the VMU. Uh, Sega GT, which I remember playing, included a, a Pocket GT top-down 8-bit racer. And I remember playing that. And probably the most that, famous uh... one... Don't you get like uh, rewards in that mini game that transfer over into yes. the actual game? Yes, too? exactly. And they transfer over to the actual game. I mean, yeah. that's kind of revolutionary. I mean, it was revolutionary yeah. for the time. No one had See, no one had done that. That's, that's what I don't understand too, though, because they they were so far ahead of their time with so many of the things mm -hmm. that they were offering mm -hmm. that even even with all this competition that came out, yeah. they should have still been able to last a lot longer. You than would it think did. so, but there's yeah. reasons why. But yeah. probably one of the most famous ones for the VMU was the uh, Sonic Adventure, included the Chow Adventure. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes. mini games where in Sonic Adventure you could the little critters that you save mm -hmm. for people that don't know all the terminology you have the, the little critters that you save you could partake in uh, various activities on the VMU that would also like enhance their stats and it was unlimited by the way for people that didn't know you in, on the VMU you could continuously enhance their stats whereas in the game there would be a you, limit or I a think level a, cap or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Whereas the and then it would transfer over into the game and you could go back to the Chow Garden as Sonic in mm -hmm. Sonic Adventure and your Chows would be there that you enhanced or leveled mm -hmm. up or played with or did whatever on the actual VMU. What the, and the Chow Chow mini games, weren't they based off like at the time there were all these other toys like the little mini Chia Tamagotchis. Pets, like, Tamagotchis. Tamagotchis, you have to like take care of yes. them and feed them and yeah. water yeah, yeah, yeah. them. That's exactly yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. much what it was like. It was what, pretty what much was like, like a yeah. like a Tamagotchi. But I loved it, dude. I, I actually remember taking it to school with me and stuff and well, playing you know, in like certain classes. That? What was that shit that we had? Uh, 99 what what was i was i still was i, I was still playing on middle those ti calculators in school back in the <laughs> i was doing that though yeah. too. i was doing they had snake on the calculators <laughs> yeah, and shit yeah, dude yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. i was doing that too but i do remember taking the vmu i think it was in middle school was i still in elementary you're school trying to when remember Dreamcast like came out i don't remember. remember what kind of like class or something yeah but had in does any i don't know i don't wait, wait, wait i always forget man where where are you where are you what state i'm are in you utah in? In Utah. Utah, okay, I always yeah. forget. Did you uh, did you go did you go to school in Utah as well? I did. Yes. Okay. All right. So I don't know if everything's the same across states, but you tell me if you remember as well. There was a class that we had. It was called like advisement or something. Did you have a class called that? No, I know what you're saying. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Advisement. Homeroom. Yeah. Homeroom. Homeroom. It was like a homeroom. I had homeroom. Home, home, yeah. Home okay. I guess in a, my school like they called it advisement. It's probably the same thing. Yeah. And it was kind of like it, in that class for us, like all we did, it was like a, basically like a uh, do your a homework. Yeah, do it was just like yeah. do your homework, it hang like, out. If you like didn't have anything to do, it was, it was like, like a free space. Yeah, it was like a free like period in, or whatever. In between class, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and I don't. And that I remember that class is where I would go and I would break out my VMU and, and I would play it for like however long the class was. I don't. Yeah. I don't instead of, remember. Instead of trying to like think like, oh man, I yeah. should probably study. They were like, do your homework. I would just lie. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna VMU it here. I'm just gonna VMU it up. I would. And I remember playing the the Chow Garden was was my favorite thing to play because again, like I said, I was a super big Sonic. Sonic fan, so I, I just remember doing that. I mean, do you guys remember? Do you guys have any memories? Did you? Was it just me, or did you guys? Not with, I, did no, you partake never, in the VMU that not much? With the or VMU no? specifically. Not really. Neither you're of you only, guys. You're the only VMU OG here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're I the did. Only I loved it. I loved it. I, I, I was yeah. I was like into it, and I think it's like, look, here's the thing though. I think it's like so revolutionary, revolutionary upon a lot of things that the Dreamcast did. I mean, the way that the controller is shaped. Again, if you see me sh mm -hmm. looking off into the distance, I'm looking at the controller. Just the way that the controller was shaped. I mean, may not. A lot of people took from that control. They did, and a they they made it a little bit better though. But like, it may not be. I haven't held one in a long time. Surprisingly, mm -hmm. being that the Dreamcast is one of my favorite consoles, I don't actually currently. Have own a, one, have a un yeah. unfortunately, but I will be getting one soon. Um, but I don't feel like the controller fit that well in your hand when you compare it to controllers today. Okay. But back then, I, I don't know, especially because I was a kid, I didn't give a shit. You know what I mean? But looking at the controller now, you can see where PlayStation, well, I mean, PlayStation had what they had, but they didn't have the analogs yet right or did the ps1 towards the end of its life the PS1 have the did analog have a dual, dual it did toward the end of, end of its oh, life yeah, right baby. yeah yeah 
But and and they had the two. <laughs> the Dreamcast only had the one stick with the D pad below it, and then the X Y A B. And then uh, a start button, no select button. It's like in between the 64 and the Xbox controller. Yes. Yes, okay. it yeah. is. Yeah. yeah. It is. Exactly. The original Xbox, the big yes. one. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the Duke. Um, the Duke. Is that what the it's Duke? called? That's what like it's called, this, yeah. The Duke. I didn't the know Duke. that. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, dude. Yeah. It's called the Duke. And the, you know they came out with um, a new one? Like, it's the it, it's it's made for today but it's made retro it's fucking huge oh. like it was and the the middle is an actual like um kind of like the vmu thing but it doesn't come out and there's yeah. not really a lot of things but it like there's lights up this, and like yeah. moves As, and does shit yeah yeah you there's know what shit. i mean i don't remember exactly yeah, what it yeah, does then, somebody correct me or i'll throw it up on one the screen of those, huh? yeah but you can buy that now for the recent consoles and it's you can actually play it you can play with it and everything if you wanted to mm. i don't think it has the black and white button though okay i think they added i could be wrong but I think they added the the only change to it is that it has the R and R and B, Mila. the R B and L B. I mean, I could be wrong about that though. But I Hyper swear the Duke Retro Xbox controller. Does it have the black and white? It uh, it does. I try to look too. It does. it does. Yes. Oh, okay. Then I'm wrong. I'm wrong. But I think a lot of other companies took from the VMU concept as well. Like mm. what you, especially Nintendo, with what you've got with the Switch, what you've got with the Wii U, what you've got with the dual screens on the uh, on the handhelds and yes. stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? They just enhanced it. They just did something else with it. I don't know for certain if they took inspiration from it, but I feel like they may have because Dreamcast was the first one to add another little screen into your controller. And I think that's a cool that's a cool concept, dude. I think it's a cool idea. You don't really have mm. anything like that now because we don't have memory cards anymore. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know how you would do it i guess the best way to do it now would be what they've done with the switch uh yeah. or what they did with the wii u if you want like the dual screen thing but it's just a cool concept and like i'm nostalgic for it dude i i really i really dug that this is the day you have trained for the day you have studied for it's thinking i think the dreamcast was a uh, ahead of its time on multiple in multiple angles yeah and i'm thinking of of other technologies sometimes when you're too early to market like if you think about disruptive technologies whether it's dvd vhs uh internet browsers search mm -hmm. engines yeah usually the people first to market don't always do that great in the yeah, long long true. run yeah and i and maybe dreamcast because i was thinking about it it launched in 99 in america the whole nine thing yeah it's discontinued i'm reading i knew it was short it's discontinued in 2001 yeah march 31st 2001 only so they only just two years later like how i'm trying, I'm trying to wrap my mind like how did that happen well maybe they just hit this this unironic negative sweet spot yeah where they were just a little too early on a, yes. a few things yeah and it just it just you went know south one of yeah. one of the other biggest reasons that it failed and failed is obviously because before it even launched in the u.s the ps2 was announced and they yeah. announced like better graphical capabilities All this shit faster this faster okay. that you know and dvd, the DVD, the player, DVD was the that big was a thing because yeah. a lot of companies were going into it wasn't just a console anymore it's now an entertainment yeah, it's system perfect yeah. storm because the d mm -hmm. that's a, yeah we were just yeah. in that middle of transition to VHS yep. to DVD. Exactly. DVD was getting low cost enough and big enough where the average person yes. was like, it's time to get a DVD player. Exactly. Well, if I got to get a DVD player, they're and 150 DVD players bucks. were expensive. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. 200 yes. bucks. Well, I guess to get a PS2 that's games and, and that's exactly, exactly. why my I'll family just get, got one. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. $300 for the PS2 and I could play games and watch movies on it. Yes. You know what I mean? Damn. And it, and it had, did have some had, internet capabilities. It wasn't where it is today, but it also did have that for people that, that wanted it, you know? Had did they the had that try CD to, in oh, there, though? Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I'm, my bad. Go ahead. I was just going to say, did the Dreamcast try to ever try to, uh, what's the word, panic, launch a DVD add-on? I don't know. I don't Dreamcast. think they did. I think it was just so short-lived with the time that they had to do everything I'm sure they were panicking in their offices, and I know that yeah. they tried to do different things to appeal to other people, like such as uh, they had the 56K modem built in, but then they had like a broadband connection so they could get faster internet speeds, and then the web browser was like one of the selling points, and you had the keyboard and the mouse as well, so yeah. they were trying to do that thing, but it's still, I don't think it was what people wanted out of the Dreamcast. Had it had a DVD player too, I think its that's, lifespan would have okay. lasted longer. So that's what I was gonna ask you, I was, and it could go to both of you. Had it had that CD capability in it, do you think that it would have lasted with the DVD capability? With the, with, yeah, if yeah. it had that capability, then. 
Do you think it would have lasted in that market uh, when it did? Like, you know, with I think it would have done and all that. Better. Do you think its yeah. longevity would have been I think better. it still would have yeah. done better. But unfortunately, the graphical capabilities of the PS2 were still higher Too far than the were, Dreamcast. But I think it would have extended the Dreamcast's yes. life a little bit longer. They weren't like a light years, light years better. They weren't, yeah. So if the, but I think they if were the, yeah. better, quote they unquote. They were better. You know? yeah. yeah. Definitely overall. It looks like they did have plans for a Dreamcast DVD player add-on, but they they scrapped it. So because they just discontinued the yeah. whole thing. Yeah. And then it I mean, also, so, man, which because a, a lot of people know, and for those that don't know, but this was like we said earlier, this was the this was Sega's last console. So it's not that they just discontinued the console; they basically shut down their entire console that, that program yeah. situation and yeah. just became publishers and developers for other companies. And that's why, obviously, now you see such Sega games such as Sonic and whatnot on, on Nintendo, Nintendo consoles, consoles on the yeah. competition on the competition, and also on like other other consoles as well. That PlayStation was blasphemy and Xbox. when I was a yeah. child. That was yes. straight up <laughs> blasphemy. Yes, you'd get uh, anybody that lived in the courtyard through the, for that. Yes, dude. Anyone that lived through the nineties. 90- these uh console wars know that that was just mind-blowingly confusing like wait a minute what like what's happening hold on my dog is probably going to knock everything over right now mila do that dog mila mila come here come over here come over here good girl but um that was almost the camera when the ps2 came out march of 2000 it sold 600 units in japan on day one so it beat it beat the dreamcast's cells yeah uh the ps2 obviously like i said we said had the ability to play dvds the dreamcast Wait, did not sold 600 600 000 beat? units in japan oh, on day I one i thought you meant 600 i was like bro you are smoking Six, 600 000. <laughs> no, that no, is no. not very yeah. many <laughs> i don't know we'll see in editing if i said it wrong or not i don't know uh 600 000 units in japan on day one okay, the ps2 sense, this yeah. is mm-hmm. um then <laughs> also in march Microsoft announced that they would enter the console market with the Xbox. Mm. And they had this big, huge announcement and all this big stuff. And it was like a big deal. Microsoft, the, the PC community, you know what I mean? They're getting into gaming. They're getting into consoles. So that was another, I guess you could say, you know, stone that was thrown that fucked things up for, for Dreamcast as yeah. well. Because yeah. the PS2 was already announced and people already knew before they even had the opportunity in the US to buy the Dreamcast, they already knew, ah, fuck, should I buy the Dreamcast? Because if I wait a little bit longer, I could get the better option. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's basically what they were marketing better options. as. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And then Xbox, uh, Microsoft came along, announced the Xbox. And then as well as around that same time frame, Nintendo comes out and announces a GameCube. So they, which, just, they just flat out got drummed out by yeah, everybody. Everybody announced yeah. all their consoles around the same time, which I wonder if that, I, I mean, too early. could maybe yeah. look then, it up. I don't know. But I wonder if that was all purposely planned to knock out the competition because... You know what I mean? They do stuff like that in the console wars, Nintendo, yeah. Sega, all yeah. that stuff. You know, they so wait, I wonder they if, wait for you to drop, and then mm-hmm. they're like, "Okay, hey, guess what? I could do this." Yeah, that yeah, because that still better. happens today too. I mean, like, look at what um, what you're the, telling the me, Series you're X came out a week nobody, before the PS5. Nobody in that two year span at Dreamcast or at Sega, anything was sitting there and trying to say like, "Hey, how can we fucking step this up so we could keep?" Well, you got to look at it like even even when PS2 and Xbox and GameCube and all these, mm-hmm. and I don't think, by the way, real quick sidebar, mm-hmm. I don't think. Um, in my opinion, GameCube was the same price as the Dreamcast, but I don't think it was the competition in the same vein that the PlayStation 2 and the Xbox were. Mm-hmm. I think it was also different because it's it's just it different. marketed like, different. Yeah, yeah, it's marketed, it marketed different, and different. you go to Nintendo to get like the Nintendo games, mm-hmm. Mario and this and that. So I think, in my eyes, it was more like I, I could get the Dreamcast and I'm also going to get the GameCube. That's how I looked at it. But I feel like when you look at it like the PS2 versus the Dreamcast, Mm -hmm. you're like, "Mm," some people are like, well, which one should I get? I'm probably just going to go with this one. Yeah, because it's so much better. That's how I feel it was. I don't know. I'm not speaking for everybody. But um, so, I mean, why did the Dreamcast fail? The PlayStation 2? The Xbox? And maybe some would say the GameCube. It lacked the DVD feature. Mm -hmm. Uh, It lacked enough third-party support as well due to a lot of developers were upset with Sega because of the failure of the Sega Saturn. Yeah, I, I was just going to bring that up. I They kind of didn't learn. And now in hindsight, I'm thinking about it in real time. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think I know what you're going to say. They didn't learn their because the Saturn had a similar thing. It came out early. Yep. The timing was off. They specifically pu- pushed the Saturn early. Yeah. And it was like they announced it and it was like, 
retailers didn't even know that was yeah it was a big it debacle. Was, yeah, it was a big debacle. Developers yeah. were all fucked up because they were like, yo, wait a minute, what? I thought we are releasing on yeah, this Yeah, and then they had to rush their games. So the Saturn actually released with a lot of unfinished games. They were extremely buggy, extremely glitchy, had a lot of problems, and it didn't launch with enough games, and it didn't launch with enough good games. It didn't have enough good games. Nothing, from, nothing didn't want to make you stick around and yeah, wait for them. Yeah. yeah, from what you know, the the, yeah. the the broad community says how they feel about it. I'm not speaking. For Although anybody, I will know? say, back in the playing the demo the demo booth games at Toys R Us, Sega Saturn had. Do you remember the game Virtual On? It's like Mech Battles. Oh my God, that sounds so familiar. Yeah. I wish to throw down on Virtual On. That sounds oh, okay. so <laughs> familiar, you should, dude. You should uh. Do you guys fuck with emulators at all, or do you I play do. only? Oh yeah, yeah, you know. I do. I got, I, I, yeah, yeah. I haven't for a while, but I have mm-hmm. a lot in my past. Um, the yeah, only ones I have. You don't want to spend stalled. like seven hundred dollars to play a Saturn game. You can <laughs> yeah. just emulate it. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and that's one I think it's worth going back and playing. It's super yeah. fun. Like right now, I have the Dolphin emula- emulator to play uh, GameCube games and shit. That's um, awesome. That emulator is awesome. Yeah, I love that emulator. And then I also have like a, a PS2 emulator, a PS1 emulator. I can't remember what they're all called right now. Um, and then I tried to get a PS3 emulator, but man, that shit just would not run properly, dude. That's a rough one. Yeah, it just yeah. I, everything was fucked. It was buggy as hell. It just never worked right. It never worked right. I forgot. I forgot why I got it. Was it God of War? Maybe I really wanted to play God of War because I haven't had a PlayStation. I say it all the time, but I haven't had a PlayStation since PS2. Shit. Dude. I mean, I've played them. Don't get yeah, me wrong, yeah, yeah. but I haven't owned one. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So I missed out on a lot of games, dude. PS3, PS4. And now we're in PS5. So like, especially the yeah, well, I mean, for, for PS5, you don't have, have to you? worry about any games. Because <laughs> yeah, there's no games. There's no games. <laughs> <laughs> have you not played the PS4 God of War? I have not. <gasps> I know. Blasphemous, Jesse. right? I know. Yeah. And I'm like a giant Greek mythology guy. I mean, oh my I, God. I know it might blow your mind right now. I didn't want to have to say it. You know, I, I don't want to be cocky, but clearly, you know, I, I kind of look like Kratos. I know. I know. Sometimes people ask me for autographs. It's fucking nuts. I have to tell them, calm down. It's not me. I'm not him. But I really want to, I do, I really, really want to play it, dude. It's I really so want to play it. That's actually the only thing. I was talking to my brother about this the other day, actually, when I, I went over to his house and we were playing uh, Mortal Kombat uh, XL, mm-hmm. uh, the one before Mortal Kombat 11, obviously, if you know how math goes. And, um, <laughs> It was. I, I love that game. Sidebar. I love. In case you don't know, Matt. I love I mean, Mortal right? Kombat. I like Mortal Kombat X yeah. more than I like Mortal Kombat 11. Yeah. I just feel like Mortal Kombat X looked better. The story was a little bit better. Um, I just. I don't know. I just kind of liked it a little. A little bit more. I feel like, in my opinion, they could have taken a couple more things from MKX and implemented it into MK11. And uh, I don't know. I just feel Would like that. Had a and game. I see that commented a lot that people prefer hmm. MKX over. MK11. I didn't play X. I did play 11. I started playing story mode on a buddy's PS5. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is actually pretty cool. And I came home and MK11 was like 30% off on Steam. I'm like, ah, fuck it. Yeah, and why I not? I played through yeah. the whole story mode. I didn't play the DLC, the mm-hmm. Aftermath, mm-hmm. but I played yeah. through like the base story mode. It was pretty cool. I didn't cool. play the Aftermath DLC either, but I did play the story mode. And I, I, I dug it. It's, it's, it's a your typical multiverse thing X because multiverses better. are popping. I do think X is better. Yeah, I just like it better. Try that. And I think it has a better selection of characters. I know it has to go with the story, MK9, MKX, MK11. So I know some people are going to die. Some people are going to die off. They're not going to yeah. be there anymore, this and that. But um, still, you just felt the selection I just, was uh, better. Yeah, I just, I, just, I just preferred the selection of characters as well But in only MKX. Alien and Predator are in X, right? And Ro- yeah. Robocop's yeah. in 11. Yeah, and Terminator and Rambo in That's 11. So, okay. Yeah. Alien and Predator, how, I don't know, man. That's hard. They were they Robocop's I wasn't the, pretty dope too. I wasn't the uh, biggest fan of Alien or Predator in MKX. Like I am not like shitting on it. It's not yeah. that I just wasn't as big on it. I I really dug um well he's an MK character in general, but I really like Tremor. I don't Tremor know who was, that is. Tremor was so cool in MKX, dude. He was so cool and they revamped him. He was fucking huge. Looked he was like he looked like a goddamn walking boulder, dude. He was just he's a, he's a ninja, but he was you know how usually the ninjas are kind of sleek and slim. That's yeah. a thick ass. Trimmer was a thick boy, man. That's a thick boy. <laughs> yeah, dude, he was a thick boy. <laughs> he was beastly, man. Trash. I really I really liked him, dude. Yeah, fuck. Yeah, he was oh, cool yeah, as dude. hell. He's uh he's taking the whole pharmacy. i want what that guy's taking man yeah dude tremor was cool as hell man i liked him and then also i don't know it's just personal preference for me like Mm. i'm a giant ermac and kenshi fan 
ah, and Ermac and Kenshi Ermac. were in MKX, Ermac. and I really missed them in MK11. Man, they're yeah. they're dead. Spoiler alert! I love. It's been too long. I you guys love, should know already. Love yeah. Ermac, dude. There's a little Easter egg. I don't know if you caught it, K, but you see, uh, I think it's in the crypt. Uh, Ermac is dead, impaled on a spike. Ah, the, I did. When you're walking I'm not around, familiar. I need to get familiar with like the whole MK lore because I actually oh, thought dude, I the insanity MK. of MK11 was kind of entertaining. Yeah, it's like, pretty cool. This is so batshit crazy. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, play. Uh, I mean, if you don't want to play them either, I have a friend that doesn't play them. He doesn't prefer to play the Mortal Kombat games. You but can he watch loves, all the cutscenes, right? Exactly. He yeah, loves the yeah, cutscenes. Yeah. So he watches all the cutscenes when the games come out because he, he loves them. He, they're like really well done. Um, Tony, so right? he, Tony, yeah. yeah. He watched MK9, MKX, and MK11, and he was like totally stoked because they're all linked. It's all one giant mm -hmm. storyline. Yeah. So if yeah. nine, 9 to 11 is all yeah. connected? It's all connected. Yeah. What's like pre 9? Is it like a separate universe or what? Yeah, I think so. I think it's like when they weren't fully like, you know, connected from game to yeah. game to game. It was just, you know. But uh, yeah, MK9, MKX, and MK11. Yeah, and MK, I did that MKX is my favorite out of those three. I did that I for know. Devil May Cry 5. That is worth watching if oh, you don't nice. want to play through mm. the whole game. Custom it's things are it. awesome. The twist mm -hmm. at the end is awesome if you're into Devil May Cry yeah. lore. Yeah. And uh, I was like, that's almost in some ways as I'm getting older, a superior way to play some games. If like yeah. really you're yeah, playing right? the game for the story and like, yeah. like the world mm -hmm. and it's time efficient. You can just watch yeah. the cutscenes, get it yeah. done. Just if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're, for anybody, if you're a mm -hmm. fan of, uh, of, of DC and superhero shit too, and you don't mm -hmm. like fighting games or don't want to play the Injustice games, the Injustice storylines are really well done as well. It's also made oh, from yeah. NetherRealm, so same people that makes Mortal, same, so yeah. same developers story, that yeah. make Mortal Kombat, so it's obviously pretty well done. Um, yeah, those Injustice ones, the, sto the storylines are great as well. They're really, re really well done. But, um, oh but yeah, yeah Dream. We're supposed yeah. to be talking about the Dreamcast. Fucking Dreamcast, Sorry. anyway. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so but, uh, yeah, you're just sick of our yeah. NetherRealm <laughs> tangent. <laughs> I have a question for both of you guys, though, before we kind of wrap up here. Um, if Sega decided to get back into the console yes. game. Yes, day long yeah. launch, I'll buy take, it. Would you take, buy take, it? Take my money. To, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I would buy it. One, I would buy it for the simple fact of Sega's legacy. Yeah, okay. it's just the, principle. If yeah. you had a principle alone, I would buy yeah. it. I feel like you'd, you you yeah. have to buy the Sega console, dude. Yeah. If I was in charge of Sega, I would tell them, come out with a mini console that plays mm -hmm. everything. That from Master great. System all the way to Dreamcast. Oh, all the great, games, yeah. every console. Yes. yes. Sell it for 300 bucks. You'll sell a gajillion of them. Yeah. But yeah. would it also have new games or would it just be a retro console with all retro? Retro. But the whole Just library. retro. Like, okay. Think about what Smash Brothers did. With yeah. the newest Smash. Mm -hmm. All previous characters. Everybody's back. Yes. Everybody's back. Mm -hmm. No one has done that for any sort of mini yeah. console. Like they're just like they release one at a time. Yeah. Here's yeah. your NES, here's mm -hmm. your mini Super Nintendo. I'm sure yeah. a mini 64 is gonna come. Yes. They're yes. probably gonna go through and they're gonna take our money through all those steps. Yeah. And at the end, they're gonna release like an all-in-one where it's like <laughs> yeah. all yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you're gonna buy that Nintendo. one too. Yeah. Would Nintendo you want... string us along forever? Oh god, I yeah. you, you oh, don't even get me yeah. started on that. But would you want them to add any new features though to this retro console? Know. Like would you want like a mess oh. like a messaging system, online capabilities? Or would you just want to I stick guess in true a sense, to yes. it, it would have to like well, online, like if you could play online co-op streets of rage. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Something. Yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah, or any anything, or even like for instance, like what I said. I'm just gonna throw one off the top of my head that that works. Like I said, I played the, the Sonic Three comp competitive mode a lot. Mm -hmm. So not every we live in a world where not a lot of things aren't couch co-op anymore. So if they yeah. did create this, it would be good even for those retro games, those even those two two D games that offered two player mode mm -hmm. to be able to play it online with other people. Yeah. I'm gonna piggyback on your concept mm -hmm. there, and if Sega were to uh, come out with a new console as well, like a, a full fledged new thing, and they're coming out with whatever they decide to call mm -hmm. it, I know. A lot of people want the Dreamcast too. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I guess you could call it that, but it might be better to call it something else. But because then, if you label it as a Dreamcast too, there might be a lot more pressure on it as well. Yeah. But you may you be can, able can, to get more sales that way though too, because or, the people are like the Dreamcast. It's the it's the second one. I want it. Yeah. yeah. You, you know combine what I mean? it like you, it is a new console. It will play new games. It is competing. But to help you secure that you're going to move units, you just kind of like. Kind of like Sony was like, hey, we get a DVD player, mm -hmm. buy the Dreamcast 2, 
by the way, even if the future games suck, it has every Sega game ever made. That's exactly what I was yeah. going to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly yeah, yeah. what I was going to say. I was going to piggyback on that. And if they were having a brand new console, let's just for the sake of the example, call it the Dreamcast 2. So it's going to have brand new games, brand new games. Do what some other consoles have done, but take it. I mean, through the, the fucking max. roof. Yes. yes. And every Sagal, Sa Sagal? Sagal. <laughs> every Sagal. Every Sagal. Every Sagal. Every Sega uh, game ever from every console, even Game Gear, all of those yes, are included. Like, I know that that is ambitious as hell. Yeah. I know it is a lot of work, that'd especially be, when you do, like, regional moon, yeah. things. You yeah. know what I mean? When you do the yeah, regional games. Yeah, there might games. be some, like, licensing and regional yes. stuff where it's not literally but, every... But, but do but it the best you, you can. can. Yeah. Yes, as many yeah, yeah. as you can, the best you can, and have that be one of your advertising points, one of your selling points, because Sega always went after Nintendo, right? Genesis does what Nintendo don't, right? Yeah. <laughs> now they, they could say, you know, however they want to label it, Sega does what the other consoles don't. They could probably <gasps> think of some easy way, that some clever way to say it. for Nintendo, because yeah. exactly. everyone knows Nintendo just is they, milking yes, everything. Yes, exactly. Yes. And just yeah. label it as the ultimate gaming system. The ultimate entertainment system. Have it do the easy things such as play DVDs, yeah. play USB, plug in, watch movies, yeah. do whatever. The have basic it, shit that everybody has. Have else it is have streaming doing, yeah. services, apps, capabilities, all that stuff that you would have in a new console, except for Nintendo. You still can't have like Netflix, mm -hmm. Hulu, and all these on, on, on Nintendo consoles, yeah. which is nuts. But have it do everything that a new console does and extra features or whatever you guys come up with and also play every Sega game in the catalog that you can possibly put in it and make that your selling point and label it. Come for your competition's throat. Do the old school yes. 90s shit. Genesis does what Nintendo don't. And label this as Sega does what the other consoles don't. People would go nuts. Yeah, because yes. then you're already separating yourself from everybody yes. right out the yes. gate. You're saying I'm better than you. you um, yeah, you, exactly. You, you, we're you. coming back. Yeah. We are the originals do you think, and we're going to show how, how, did, how all you motherfuckers how to do it. Do you think it's a fear of possibly like uh, damaging their brand if it doesn't do as well? So then yeah, maybe, a little at, maybe bit of that. at this point they're and looking at it as like, well, fuck, in order for us to put anything out, like you were saying, to compete with mm -hmm. PlayStation, Xbox, this, that, et cetera, you're going to have to bring, you're going to have to come out the gate with something crazy. Mm -hmm. And then at this point, is it more of a risk or I is it them just saying, you know what, maybe we just won't get involved? I do. Like, I agree. I, yeah. I agree. I think it is a little bit of that. And I think it's a financial thing too. Because right now they're just focused on making games for everybody else. I'm not certain that they want to take that risk with well, they're not even their name doing, and money. As a game developer and publishing, they're doing okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. they're but still they're not, not doing like, amazing. They don't have, I mean, name a Sega published game that's done really well recently. Mm. I yeah, can't think of one. The only one would be Sonic Mania, I, I would think. Probably, yeah. The only Fran, the only Fran, the, all Sega has right now is Sonic. And that and doesn't so do brand that great anymore. Nostalgia. Yeah. Um, that's all they got really so so there's not really that much of a big risk then then why yeah. not go for it It seems it, like know? they're kind of fizzling out and will eventually yeah die anyway yeah yeah which yeah. another side note i was looking up sh cool shit for this uh podcast trying to find like something cool yeah i learned that uh for the dreamcast sometime either right before the dreamcast or after the dreamcast was discontinued the mm -hmm. ceo liquidated all his money to keep sega afloat yeah no yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah i heard about that no shit. So it was like he just personally was like, yeah. I'm gonna put all my own personal money. Fuck this. I'm going all That's in. somebody that gives a shit right there. Yeah. Yeah. yeah somebody is going all actually. in. Yeah. I yeah. wonder if he's still a part of the, the, the team because that was a long time ago. You yeah, know what I mean? It was a long time ago. Fuck, 2001. It's 2021 I would hope now. You're getting a little, I doubt he's little a nest part of the egg or anymore. something out of that. You yeah. Know? I'm sure he's still getting something. But yeah. I, I think, I really do think I'm stoked for that idea that we all came up with. I think that's a really way, a great way for Sega to do it. And if they're fizzling out anyway, might as well go balls out. Yeah. Fuck it. Yeah, might as bang, well. That's right? what I was thinking. If you're going yeah. balls out, why not fucking? Why not? Why not? Why not? Why not go out with a bang? If if yeah. you if you do go out, why not go out with a bang, man? Hey, yeah. at least we and fucking to, tried, man. I really want this now, dude. Yeah. Like I don't even want to end this I like, episode. I, I, I like just want to keep talking hype, about it. I like how we just hyped ourselves <laughs> into a system that's probably, that's probably gonna never, never gonna happen. But <laughs> I, I do, I, I do think someone eventually will come along, and they'll take backwards compatibility or something to the next yeah. level where it's like multiple generations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we might be like a few more mini consoles for each of them. Yeah, but I yeah. think at some point, because if you think about the cost, like emulation, like you, I can go and download every, like all those consoles and every mm -hmm. game for all those consoles in a single zip file, open it and play it immediately. Yeah, mm -hmm. like yeah. like the hardware, it's it's not. I don't think technologically or development wise that expensive to get a lot of the older stuff, like sixteen bit and older, 
mm-hmm. up and running on a new console. No, I don't think it would be diff- Maybe that difficult. Maybe emulating, emulating, because you can't do like actual hardware backwards compatibility. Yeah. Where like someone could plug in a game, a game gear and a Genesis and a put yeah. a seat like yeah, not yeah. actual. It'd have to be through emulation. Yeah. Yeah. Through backwards compatibility. Maybe the Dreamcast and Saturn would be a little bit tricky, but if there's emulators on PC for both of those that are really good, mm-hmm. I don't see why you couldn't just release a system where it's like, yeah, it it's not true backwards compatibility where you're putting the, the physical cartridge in. Yeah. yeah. But it's yeah. like an online virtual arcade yeah, exactly. where it's like everything. Which is basically what Nintendo yeah. had for the Wii and the Wii U, the virtual console. And they had yes. tons of stuff on there. They even had Sega games on there. They had all kinds of shit on there. That ga- Game Gear, Game Boy, all I mean, everything was on there. I think right now the only one that's really winning in backwards compatibility is Microsoft. Microsoft is doing yeah. the best. Because Nintendo yeah, is doing best. absolutely horrible. Their backwards compatibility sucks. The PlayStation is only doing PS4 games right now, and it's only a a limited amount, I believe. Yeah, it's not even the Which whole Which sucks, because remember roster. the PS3, launched PS3, PS1 mm-hmm. and PS2, all games backwards yeah, compatibility? right away, yeah. Was yeah. the shit. It's like, as, as we're developing better uh, technology, they're saying that it's harder for them to do nah, backwards it's compatibility. Bullshit. It's probably uh, yeah. true. It's probably I true. I don't know. I don't know. Nah. I feel like you should, it should be easier nah, for yeah, you. Yeah, you, if you're advancing, then the technology I had before should be easier to use or to, yeah, to keep going. Yeah, I, I would yeah, think so, no, but I don't yeah. know. I mean, we're not, we're not in there. We're not watching it. We're not seeing the, the real get us situation. But Just get us in there. I think Microsoft <laughs> is going to take the cake on backwards compatibility <laughs> moving forward. But I think that this would be yes. awesome, man. <laughs> I really think this would be awesome. You guys let us know what you think because we really want this to happen. Um. Mm. But all right, Cade, man, we're gonna we're gonna let you go, man. Uh, this was a great time, dude. We're so glad to finally have you on. And um, let him let anything 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 you want to say before you get out of here. Anything you want to tell people? Uh, I'm sorry we didn't talk about Shenmue, probably the most important <laughs> game. Sorry, yeah, guys. I'm sure uh, people were really wanted that. I apologize. Other than that, you guys, thanks for having me on. If you feel like occasionally watch someone get drunk and play video games. Instagram or TikTok. Mm-hmm. And then if you want to check out these guys on the podcast, just Google Side Project Gaming Memories. I'm sure it'll pop up. Probably. Mm-hmm. And there might be someone else that you find interesting on there. And uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Awesome, man. Just like he said, man, Instagram at gaming underscore memories underscore pod on TikTok at gaming memories pod, all one word. And his podcast is available where podcasts stream. Dream. We can't get out of here yet. Why not? Because we got to get into this This week's cosplay cosplay of the week. Ooh, man, it was real high pitch. Gonna have to compress. Blowing out eardrums. This is what we do. And this week's cosplay of the week is none other than Vitamin J Doherty. And let me get my pumpkin bombs ready Mm -hmm. because I'm throwing it up on the screen right about. No. Mm. No. And this week's cosplay of the week, as you can clearly see, but for the listeners, it is of Green Goblin from the Spider-Man universe. And this is absolutely amazing, Super dude. Super detailed. Oh, my God. Look at this, man. He's got, look at the ears. The ears are, I mean, everything is a standout, mm. dude. What do I even say? You know what I mean? Like, what do I even say? Everything here is a standout, dude. Look at the the hat thing. I always forget what it's called, but you know, like the yeah. like the goblin style hat thing. He's got the goblin ears going on, with the, dude. With the little glasses, the too. glasses yeah. on the top. Oh my god, man, it's amazing. Just a, sm- just a posture, even just how you yes, took the dude, shot. Yes, dude, he's got right? like the posture down. Like it's, mm. it just seems like something that Green Goblin would do. It's comic accurate. Mm. The way that he's got the. I wonder what it is, dude, because uh, we were looking in the comments and everything, and looking mm. at the description or whatever. And forgive us if we if we missed it on some of your posts, man. But we we didn't see like. Where, 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 who you got the costume from, mm-hmm. or if you made it yourself, or how it was made, or anything special like that. Special effects, makeup, yeah, yeah. special effects, makeups, you know, whatever, whatever it may be, man. Mm-hmm. But it's absolutely amazing, dude, from the way that the eyebrows are to where it's not, it's almost not even human anymore. I mean, it still has human likeness to it, yeah. but it's a goblin. You know what I mean? The way that the eyebrows are, just the, the chin, smirk, the too, nose, the, smile. the smirk that you have yeah. down. Yeah, dude. That's not like, Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah, man. Fuck yeah. It's nah, amazing. I, it, just because of the way it sits with the angle, it, yeah, it's dude, just, he's just, this, this, this for our listeners is definitely his abs with that he's doing an mm. ab workout he goes to these conventions and he's like i'm green goblin but i'm also getting in my workouts or uh, he might like, be, hey, yo, can you stand he he's might like, be holding in that poison know. gas that he's you not never trying. know yeah he might be holding in hey 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 but well, speaking of that he's got the pumpkin bomb there mm-hmm. in his hand absolutely dope dude so you did even like props and stuff you got mm-hmm. props made man i like the little spider-man just chilling yeah dude he's got the little spider-man and uh, you know what it, it, hanging from the <laughs> Hang it from the neck, dude. I dig it. Got the pouch in there where you hold the bombs and hold everything else. It's absolutely great, dude. 
There's like really not much to say other than that this is absolutely phenomenal, man. Yeah, like we'd love really to know. Is, we'd love to know for sure. Uh, more details. If, if there's yeah, more details. Yeah. How you came about putting it together? Yeah. Uh, did you do stuff yourself, or you know, did you outsource? Go through different people. Yeah, what'd we, you do? we, we, this we would definitely awesome, want dude. to know more about yeah. this. I like the kind good. of like leatherish look that it yeah. has. I dig that, dude. Yeah. Like the leather on the um, the shoulders mm-hmm. and like on the uh, uh, the abdomen and chest and everything, yep. and then all the belts, dude. All the belts and stuff. And even everything the, like scaling, hanging down, even dude. The yeah, and, and the like scales, that. dude. And I love how like the um the boots are kind of like ripped that, up and worn, worn out. Yeah. Oh, dude, this is absolutely amazing, man. And the uh, photo that we're actually looking at was from Comic Con, uh, New York NYC, City. Yeah. Uh, New York Comic Con. I don't know what year or anything. Forgive me. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, all the photos that were in this uh, gallery of photos, you know, you swipe and you see more. Mm-hmm. Were all photos of people that uh, I believe all photos of people that took like photos of him of you know him, what i mean yeah, yeah like say, hey we want to take a picture yeah and whatnot him. and stuff like that so there was no actual f- specific photographer cred but this is absolutely dope man and, and like i said and like you said we do want to know more because this is totally cool so yeah. if this becomes a promo clip which it will mm-hmm. um write it down in in the in, in the comments or or feel free to dm us if you don't want to yeah, write it in the comments please, whatever it yeah, may yeah. be or or feel free to not say anything at all you don't have yeah, to man yeah. you don't have to because i know you're the green goblin you got shit to do all right you got things to do gas to let out gas to let out bombs to throw yeah. Spider-Man to chase. I know. Especially with the multiverse and everything going on. You got like three different Spider-Man. You got tons of different Spider-Man you got to catch. I get it. This should actually be... The Green Goblin. The that's Green in. Goblin that we yes, get. Yes, dude. That would actually be really yes, dope. Yes, dude. Fuck it, man. Go to Marvel and do and do and the, say, hey, do, guess the what? Uh, do the audition, dude. I'm showing up. Yeah. I'm the guy. That's forget it. it. I'm the forget, one you need. Forget William Dafoe. You need me. Yeah. You know, or put William Dafoe in this and give you credit for it, dude. Yeah. Yes. There you go. Yes. Concept design, everything... Vitamin. Yes, <laughs> love it. Vitamin J Doherty, your cosplay of the week, Green Goblin, is for us is amazing. amazing. <sighs> well, this episode's running on a little long, so we won't waste any more of your guys' time. We thank you guys for tuning in, and we thank you from the bottom of our, our hearts. hearts. Thank you for watching, for liking, for commenting, for sharing, for doing all of those beautiful things that you do over on YouTube.com slash Side Project Podcast. Podcast. When you go down, you hit that big red subscribe button, and when you hit it, it goes, oh, yeah, 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 and you get 100 sexy, sexy project, project points. points. Thank you for listening on Apple and Google and Spotify and all those things that you listen on when you rate and review and you like and you do the thumbs up and you do all those things. Oh, God, we love it. We love it. We love it. Oh, Juice, tell them where they can find you, man. Across all social media platforms, Captain and Andrew- Captain underscore juice box, oh, but yeah. on uh, on Twitch it's uh, juice box XP. That's right, good one there. Good juice one box there, man. You attention find, to detail. You can find me at ig hates chazzy on Instagram, and a couple of my other things are named different, so I'm not going to name them here today. And we'll figure it out <laughs> another time, and I'll change some shit later. If you're looking for us, the duo, the magnificent, the both of us, you can find us at side, side project, project podcast. podcast. Oh, juice, hit him with some green bomb pistols, man. Uh, one pistol. Because my arm is...